issue looks the correct color. Everything looks like it should. Um, all right, and you definitely don't see any cauterization. Uh, well, it looks normal, just not acting quite normal. Yes. And um, nothing's like nothing's healing itself, right? I'm not seeing any like no, bone. Not at all. We're not gonna like wake up tomorrow and there'll be like a baby attached to this big arm well, of like I, another well, patriot. Well, I mean, who can really say? You know. <laughs> um, okay, so a comma as you get your vibro knife out and uh, charge the high frequency energy field that lets it cut through mega damaged steel, uh, you bring the blade to bear on the outer flesh by the edge of the arm where it's severed. Um, and as you start to apply some force with your uh, mega damage supernatural strength, you notice that after just a second, you realize that you're not even cutting it. Um, you lean your shoulder into the act of cutting a little more and start pushing your body weight down to really get some leverage. And as you do so, after just a moment of pretty, pretty extreme effort, you finally feel the outer layer of skin uh, separate and peel back. Um, and as the blade touches the tip of the muscle tissue, it instantly stops again. So you get down, you know, like a centimeter or two and then instantly hit what feels like a like a steel wall. Um, as you start pushing again, the strangest sensation starts happening as each individual muscle fiber is snapping under the field's intensity and the tremendous strength you're applying individually. And so you guys are basically hearing mega damage uh, uh, cord snapping one at a time like piano wire and it creates the most unsettling and discordant uh, musical notes that you could imagine. It's, it's really, really uh, creepy the way that this is creating an almost, an almost kind of like musical expression. Um, but as each of the muscle cords, the fibers snap, um, and you're keeping your other hand away because you realize as these things snap, it's almost like a bridge cable snapping as they kind of rebound you actually see them whipping against the rest of his exterior flesh so hard. If a normal person's flesh would have been there like their hand, it'd take a finger straight off. So as all of these little ribbons continue snapping after uh, a couple of moments of cutting, which should have just been instantaneous, after a few moments of cutting, even some sawing back and forth, you're finally able to get down all the way to the bone. And as you do so you notice that the bone itself, you absolutely cannot cut it with this knife. You start applying as much pressure as you can, and you simply cannot even make a mark in the bone itself. Now you've cut a line about, we'll say about five inches long, down through the skin and muscle, muscle tissue um, that you can definitely kind of pry open carefully and kind of look around at the inner structure if you like um, but after a couple attempts you realize there's there's no way this weapon is going to let you actually cut this bone I mean that happens I look at Ren and like sorry there's really uh, nothing else I can do I can't even get through it you blew it no I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever ask me for anything. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, that was kind of expected there. Um, we should keep an eye on this thing. Make sure that um, that flesh doesn't start healing back up. I don't. I don't trust this thing. It's... <laughs> but um. Until then, you can always use it for, like, a stranger or something. I don't know. Oh, what a grip. What a grip. That's that's really taking your life in your own hand right there. I'll tell you. Um, I'm going to um, go back to um, slide back the, uh, the pieces of these. Um, um, uh, little 
orbs, these drones. Okay. And keep fidgeting with them and like basically right now I'm trying to um see what the innards are and how much room I have to work with inside and how much, you know, how much space there is. Okay. And try, uh, try to move things around to create as much space inside while still having the one that I have operate. Okay. Um, uh, while he's doing that, I uh, sheave the vibral blade, and then I tilt my head slightly, and I say, Hey, Ren, I got a question. Uh, is there a possible way that you can just look at this uh, techno wizard knife that I have and just inspect it to see if there's any malfunctions or anything to it then i hand them my uh tw knife okay you before hand... i grab it i'll be like have you seen what my armor does makes beards yeah it's not supposed to do that and i'll grab the knife <laughs> <laughs> all right <Yeah>. you, <laughs> you beard chuckles at the joke between comrades <laughs> All right. Um, so I'll quickly... lifts up his helmet visor and smiles at Red real big. Puts his helmet visor back down. Right I'll quickly inspect the knife and I'll try to be kind of slick about it by like you know like you know when you in your military movies when someone gets a gun and they pop it open and check to see if you know and pull it out, open it up real quick, all that. I'll try to see if I can take the knife and kind of like open it up real quick to see what the innards are for the um for the techno wizardry stuff inside of it and see what. It looks like before, like maybe closing the hilt or handle again. All right. So you essentially like field strip the motherfucker. You get it all broken down. Everything's good to go. And you uh, just kind of check over it very quickly. Why don't you roll on your techno wizard skill? And. I've done this. I don't. My first time. You're popping my cherry, Okama. If you're having a hard time. Finding the skill percentage, just let me know. Um, is that just under skills? Uh, it should be, but I can look it up in the main. Is that TW too. construction I'm trying to do? Yes. Okay. Um, no modifier? Uh, you're going to have a plus 20. 20 modifier? Ready to do that. Okay. Nice. All right. God so, bless. um, right away you realize this is actually a pretty, pretty mundane design. Nothing really exciting going on here, and all pretty easy to service maintenance. Part of me is like. Part of me is like, huh, I can do better than this. But part of me is also like, fuck, I was hoping to learn something. <laughs> so you do realize that this is all pretty much in your wheelhouse. Um, you could probably do some modifications if you wanted to. But for the most part, it's a solid design. It was done by somebody very capable. And they put in all the necessary work and time to make sure that this thing isn't going to... Now, you know. me just inspecting this, I can obviously see the crystal and how it's constructed, but can I tell what it, it, the spell that's enchanted in it is and what it actually does? Um, or... Yeah, you're able, to, you're able to discern that essentially what it's doing is it's doing kind of a called... Or I'm sorry, a modified call lightning spell um, that winds up acting kind of almost like uh, what you'd know as a shock and grasp or electrify field. Uh, Which I'm sure is probably something I've dealt with when I'm constructing my gun. I've probably Absolutely. tried this or done some similar things like this. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's very familiar. Um, this one is definitely less complex because yours is designed to basically enchant a solid slug moving through some fields of energy. Um, so kind of, you know, very kind of apples and oranges, but both fruit. So, you're, yeah. you're I mean, confident you, you're pretty knowledgeable. About I would have guessed thing. me constructing the gun and trying to get it to do what it does with my gun would have probably possibly been practiced on more simple, like a, a knife or a blade before. Absolutely. Absolutely. I had attempted to do my gun thing. So this might be familiar to me. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, you get, um, you get that information and you're also able to tell that you, with some tinkering, you may be able to improve the enchantments a little bit. You might be able to kind of clean up the design a little possibly 
even just add some effects to it if that's you know yeah i'll I'll ask him i'm like is there you said if there's something wrong with it i mean it seems basic and fine i mean is there i mean what are you specifically asking did you want something done to it and well, as, as you hear that that, few... that 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 mention of basic it just stings just a little just a little bit <laughs> Uh, I mean, I was just asking because I used it a few times throughout my uh, years, and I have yet to get any type of maintenance on it. So I'm just verifying that it's uh. Yeah, it's, it's in good work, and I could clean it up for you a bit. Um. Uh, if and there's... you do definitely notice there's you could you know it it could use a little servicing for sure. Um, if there's specific things you want, or if I have any inkling of maybe something I could do to it, I'd be happy to. At the moment, I kind of got to fix this beard thing, so that's kind of a priority. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Take your time. I'm, but I'm in no rush. I honestly, guess the... no, fair, of course. Um, but that is actually a thing I did want to discuss. Uh, there's just been so many things at once, but um, we have a chance to possibly follow them to this temple. But also, um, which I'm not opposed to, but what would be, I think, ideal for us, and that this is not um, turning down that idea, is um, we, we, we need, or at least I won't speak for you, I, I need stuff. I need a lot of things. I need, I need to tinker. I need things to tinker with. Um, I have been... I had a reality smack me in the face of uh, what's kind of out here and kind of um, how I need to up my game a bit. And um, I am well said. Uh, freshly into some new funds and severely low on things to play with. So I need to buy some things to do such things. And um, while when we get around to it, which inevitably has to happen, um, I'm just saying so, uh, if you have any ideas or can think of anything, or if I happen to see something that strikes my fancy, I, I'd be happy to try to uh, implement it into your blade as well. Um, but for right now, it's it's a solid it's a solid blade. It does what it's meant to do. Perfect. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll happily clean it up for you uh, um, well, now that I have it open, and I'll start. I'll beginning just to do like you know, basically like kind of cleaning ritual that I probably do often with once of my things. Yeah. Just you, kind of not, kind not even realizing I'm. Yeah. Not even really sure realizing I'm doing it. I'm kind yeah. of like saying I'm gonna do it as I'm already doing it, kind yeah. of just like out of habit. In fact, you you finish that up very quickly, and while you're still kind of discussing some of the things you're wanting to get done. Um, why don't you go ahead and roll on your mechanical engineering skill? You're gonna have a you're gonna enjoy a plus fifteen percent bonus on that roll. Acknowledging what Ren said, Ymir nods his head and speaks clearly into the translator and goes, "I miss the forge. I agree with Ren. We should re we should resupply and provision ourselves for the journey ahead." I miss. There is many projects that I wish to work on with my armor and repair. Dildo. <laughs> it almost, I was going to call you Dildo, sorry. It almost went to that zero and then it rolled back to that seven. <laughs> and that's with the 15, okay. It, roll for uh, insanity, Red just called me a Dildo. <laughs> <laughs> Homicidal rage, <laughs> bitch! I hit it a little room. You, you get a you get a confused look on your face as dildo refers to a small, <laughs> flightless Russian carnivorous <laughs> bird that likes to throw its prey onto large spikes, uh, much like the American strike. Um, a bird. All right. No. <laughs> all right. Uh, you are able to get the sphere. Uh, pieces pretty much assembled and moved around um, to kind of get in there and start really figuring out, uh, you know, some information about their inner workings. Um, but you still, you're going to need some more time. Um, as you're... Yeah, I'll figure that I'm overwhelmed right now and there's a lot of things going on and my focus isn't purely, purely on this. And I'm like, yeah, I'll get back to this later and I'll kind of put it back together as was and figure out. Okay. Maybe the components I can put into it and then try to fit those later once I You did glean start. some information though. So you've you've definitely made some progress by even looking at it for a moment. So um 
All right. As this conversation is in passing, Ymir takes out the plate from his pack and sets it on the, the table in front of him and sets uh, the blade Akama had uh, side by side and begins to study him, sort of matching the runes, trying to discern or figure out. Uh, I don't know if um, I figure maybe roll an etching and embossing or a recognized weapon quality, something like that. Actually, no, you just doing that is more than enough. As you set them okay. side by side, <clears throat> you absolutely realize that by combining the two, there is a lot more potential to create something useful. You would think that the blade itself, although it's performing relatively the same function, by adding something that's a little more specifically a power source in the plate to the blade, that by reforging both of those into something else, you feel that there almost wouldn't be a chance for you to break the enchantments of them. This, okay. should, this should basically guarantee that you're going to be able to make something useful. Now, what does useful mean? Well, what the hell did this thing do in the first place? You don't know. So is exactly. it going to continue doing what it, whatever the fuck it was that it was doing before? Or is it going to be something completely different? Nobody. I'll can see say. what he's doing and I'll catch, I'll catch what he, I'll figure out what he's doing and I'll take a little plastic jewel and bedazzle it to the arm of the Patriot and put it on top of both pieces of metal and be like, ta-da! No, <laughs> well, I want to use uh, no, recognize gemstone quality and realize that it's fake. <laughs> <laughs> That's good shit. That's good shit. Okay, so... I'll be right back in, I'll be right back in uh, just a, a minute or two. I gotta, uh, Actually, yeah, I was going to say, why don't you guys take this opportunity, think of anything else that you're wanting to fuck with. Let's take our five-minute break, and okay. we'll come right That's back. good. All right, excellent. Cool. Ooh, interesting. And you guys got all cool fucking knickknack paddywhacks. I'm over here like, I make portals. What the fuck are you talking about? You're a reality bender, bro. You you just don't understand the possibilities yet. Like, uh, when you get leveled up, you're going to be a powerhouse. Like Odin was saying, think about this. Fire giant. Rip open an elemental portal of water. Flood the fucking cavern. Kill the motherfucker. Like, you're you're just starting out. You're, you've got, you're a fucking martial arts badass with mega damage fists and... Portal, you got you got quite a character on you, Dex. I like fucking Akama a lot. Don't get so hard on yourself. We're just we're yeah, in the I know. beginning. I, I just feel like when you guys are doing stuff, I'm just idly standing by, maybe meditating. That's for as far as I go. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of meditation. Maybe he's like Kenshiro. You know, Kenshiro did a lot of quiet contemplation right before people died. You know, there ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah, but, but how the fuck was he before those problems happened? He was walking quietly to himself. Did you ever hear him, like, monologue or anything? No, he was. He didn't have to. He moved sort of like Ymir so, does. I mean, it also was, like, back in the fucking 70s. So True. maybe they just, like... I mean, Maybe Bruce he doesn't Lee, want to talk to himself. Bruce Lee and Mad Max, I mean, that's the... the um, creator of Hokuto Shinken said that's basically, he's like, I was a huge fan of Mad Max and martial arts movies, so I made Mad Max martial arts anime. Hey, real quick, I just want to toss something in there. Um, so, Ymir wrestles and is into his own kind of like, you know, martial arts and combat fighting. And Akama, I don't know if we've really talked about this, but Bro, you're like a straight up martial artist. Like you're something you would definitely do in your off time. That like you're mm. not even a weapons guy. You're straight I, uh, up martial arts. So, shadow box or I, I like... mean I'd be doing so that's where I'm going with this is that your guy would definitely be working out and practicing, but you've got somebody on your team that's also got supernatural strength that knows how to wrestle. So just throwing that in yep. the mix. I'll I'll be back. Yep. 
damn dog we're gonna be fighting you'll be taking me out i'm like damn man i'll get better one day I'm no gonna, i mean that, defeat you bro to, to be to be honest that's a really <laughs> viking thing to do because warriors back in the day even best friends used to step Sorry. in a ring together yeah and it was basically almost to the death like they you know you had to yield in order for the sparring session to stop and that's difficult for a viking warrior to yield so a lot of these sparring sessions went and that's something that his tribe would be very accustomed to because he's not the only bjorn kid the clan that he comes from is clan dire bear they're all bear worshippers like he is just sort of like the chosen champion of his clan but his <laughs> clan are all badass warriors that Damn. all that all fight you know, they're basically the hardline soldiers. You have Snowhawk, Timberwolf, and Dire Bear. Timberwolf is more like raiders, quick, you know, espionage, that kind of shit. Snowhawk are like shamans and uh, spiritual leaders, that kind of thing. And then you have Clan Dire Bear, where he comes from, which are all hardline fucking straight up warriors. So that's something that he would be very accustomed to. If you want, I mean, we could always keep it friendly, of course. There would never be a chance of, like, they would push each other to the point of where fucking you know death was going to occur or anything major right but they would definitely could go hard on each other because of the fucking mega damage <laughs> like <laughs> we don't have to necessarily you know pull the same p poor ren if he tried to box with any of us that would be uh, a little rough if it was one on one no weapons and shit like that yeah that's no but ren would Probably at some point watching you guys once you practice his yeah. swordsman skill, even though yeah. he knows he couldn't beat you in strength, but you know, attempt no, to increase his speed and agility. Absolutely, absolutely. Watch it. You know, look for openings. Look for you know, and increase it, and that may uh, help you later on when dealing. Is there like a montage those. scene of like once like a oh, well, tech's a bit better, like. Yep. <laughs> Him going just like a like a, a like a wooden sword and just like yeah, doing some moves and dashing back and forth and going at Wotek and Wotek just going whap and just like yeah. flying off screen. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we'll try again tomorrow. <laughs> All right, we got uh, everybody back. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Wait and okay. Wait. Sorry, just taking notes. Oh, no worries at all. I hope I didn't. I heard you guys talking as I was walking by earlier. I hope I didn't derail what you were talking about. I just wanted to throw mm. oh, no. an idea. No, I mean, yeah, we, yeah, you definitely, um, you, you just, you didn't in, interrupt anything. I was just telling Dex that he's got a fucking cool character and fucking. Yeah, there's so much shit that <laughs> his character can do. But I like the idea of, like, shadow boxing or wrestling. Like, that shit's dope. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, Something to think about. Because I, I was just telling him, like, since we're both mega damage, and so we, you know, we can go pretty hard on each other, and fucking that's... That's dope. You guys will heal like motherfuckers too. You're supernatural. Right. That's strength. what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, for real. When, um, when I was a kid, we, everybody that I was tight with, we beat the Christ out of each other all the time. And that's one thing I could say that it really kind of put into me is I know a little bit of everything now. And if you guys have certain skills that you, I mean, in your downtime, sharing skills is a great way to kind of build everybody up. So, yeah. You know, Indeed, I like that. So I don't know. I don't know if you want me to go after the session and kind of go over, or uh, between weeks and go over some of the ideas I had yeah, for some fuck, things yeah, I want to tinker with, or should I do it now? Um, if you want to just give me a brief synopsis of anything you want to be doing right now, um, yeah, yeah, then we'll go real, over that together. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm gonna expanded. I just I want to try to tinker and look at my uh, armor, see if I can fix the armor of Ethan, and then I also want to see. Um, if I could possibly, uh, from the little bit I've done, I'm, my plan is to be able to f figure out room inside the orb and the, the drone, repair the one with parts I can find or buy parts for it, 
um, and then make room so they can um, – basically, I want them to be able to either uh, uh, create an energy field um, to uh, to cause a um, – what's it called? Um, uh, what can I think of it? A magic shield. And then also a uh, blinding like a, flash. You're talking about like a force field or you're talking about – like I, like I, um essentially like I I would have these kind of be uh drones with me and then I could send them out for quick like things like a a blinding flash okay um or a uh or if something's attacking us I could throw it up as like a a quick like magical shield to b block something like as uh if I know something's coming to protect uh you know like fly a like, you know say if, say if we see like a rocket coming down and getting ready to land on us I could possibly throw it up and create a uh like an umbrella of energy shield over us i a defensive shield. i totally get you are you talking about a flat plane of force i'd say or are like you about i'd a say bubble? captain america captain america disc style um for the moment i don't know about bubble yet uh but... okay all right so basically a concave plane yeah and if we found any like pretty sweet like hills use that same ability to create little uh Discs that we can sled sled on. <laughs> Joking. Well, hey, I mean, you know. Quick question: If you, uh, if you have telekinetics, I don't see why you couldn't repurpose something like that, right? Christmas vacation style. <laughs> Wax that fucker up, man. <laughs> uh, let's see, force field concave. Okay. All right. And I don't know why I got over. the fucking stream here. Uh, and you had... So it was the blinding flash, the force field for the orbs you wanted to study first? Uh, magic shield, which would be... Magic shield would be the effect that I'm going for to an extent, but I'm using uh, energy field to capture that uh, into that, to that substance. And then blinding flash would just be a spell that I would... Uh, attempt okay. possibly just to uh just to be able to uh use through it and a simple a simple spell that i would tie to it as well and did you want to start redesigning your armor before you study the orb and do the yeah yeah so okay. so my ideal while looking at the orbs while we were in the talk was those ideas but i'm not going to put them into place yet it was just kind of like what I could do with these things, okay. opening them up and seeing what I could do, but not attempting to start working on that development yet. My first priority is fixing my armor so I don't choke myself out. Okay. I don't. Well, yeah. So I can assume in your free time this evening, that's what you're going to want to start with. Yeah. My free time this evening besides sleep will be mostly spent besides conversation would be purely on my armor. Okay. And we had, okay. Um, I want to mark that down. I think I said like six. I just had a quick question, Odin. Yes, sir. Uh, to forge the the plate and the blade together, correct? Would that count? Uh, could I do that as a normal smithing action, or would the drain of creation be active? Or is that just when you take a non-mega damage uh, material and make it mega damage, like the nails or plows or whatever? I, bro, for some reason, I... I might be remembering this wrong, but I feel like those minor enchantments don't really do the big drain of PPE okay. where you get weaker. I think, yeah, it's, yeah. or I'm sorry, the big drain of PE, yeah. physical endurance is what we're yep. talking about. Yep, yep, yep. Um, I think that's mostly just when you enchant an object to be magical, like forever. I think okay. I think that's their big. So I could cost. perceivably take the plate and the blade and smith it together in sort of a normal smithy blacksmith action and get a result out of it without having the huge drain of creation put on. Um, roll a Kuznia. Eh, roll a perception check for me. That'll be under saving throws in your character sheet. Yes, sir. Active. Okay, so Ren Perception. Okay. Um you realize that you should be able to forge an object from these two constituent components 
without doing that large investment. Um, and you also realize that after you're done, not only would you two be able to collaborate, but you feel like with Ren's assistance, he may be able to add something to the equation as well. You're not really sure because you're pretty unfamiliar with techno wizardry, but Oops. from yeah. what you've seen so far, you guess that this could be a collaborative effort where you both have a hand in making something really unique and interesting. No so, doubt. Okay, cool. I'll add that to the notes then. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. Uh, Akama, jumping over to you. Uh, what are you doing? What do you want to be working on? And is there any like direct shit you want to do, uh, any of you guys, when he's done before people start kind of breaking down for the evening? Um, if you know, be thinking about if there's someone you somewhere you want to go, something you want to do, because uh, we're going to kind of speed through some of this in a minute. Uh, uh, let me first start recording because I didn't really know we we're kicking it off. Uh, hold on. Oh shit! I'm yeah, sorry. I, I, I asked if everyone was back. I didn't. I. No, you're good. I don't you're know good, why I didn't. We're good. We're good. Okay. Um. So I am. Well, first off, are we gonna talk about what she just talked? Uh, basically laid on us on the table. Is that is that something that we're doing right now? Or everybody's just off doing their own thing? And then... No. At this point, so... you guys are all standing there talking. You got like yeah. Every... I'm sitting at the table studying the two pieces, but I'm still involved yeah. in the conversation. Yeah. You haven't given Ren an answer on where you stand on it. I've told, I told Ren that. Oh, you I'm with told it. Ren, I'm uh, I'm re I'm ready to go toward that. Uh, what was it called? The uh, Saints Path, Path of the Saints, uh, Temple of the Saints. I'm I'm good to go toward that area because it does pique my interest uh to head there but regarding the other places uh the bitter creep uh supposedly it's uh shouldn't we shouldn't go but if we do go i'm sure there's something there that will be maybe beneficial for us uh i i want to i want to just interject one small thing real quick one thing that you do remember is that Harmony was stressing that the more that you guys do to gain notoriety, the better it will be for you uh, yep. when you're being recruited. And mm -hmm. you do remember that she said that in the bitter creep, some kind of terrible cold is spreading from some phenomenon yeah. and that there are definitely some settlements within its territory. So I just want to, I want to make sure that everybody understands the framing that that could be an opportunity for more notoriety. And whenever I give you guys descriptions of some of these things, try and like, I'm going to try and give you clues as to what you could be looking for. That's not, I a hundred percent want you guys to, to take me at face value on this. That's not me saying that you guys should go there. I just want to point out that's how I'm going to give you guys clues as to where you could be finding opportunities. The same way, obviously, the House of Saints has its own allure and, you mm -hmm. know, all the other things I mentioned. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Uh, so, Akama is basically thinking to himself, like, uh, I feel like I was in La La Land when Pilgrim had shown this power and what she can do, like what is she capable of. And when Harmony was talking about these places, I felt like I wasn't in tune to what she was talking about most of the time. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts about the plug or the frost-based spark? I'm honestly, I, <clears throat> I'm in a bit of a peculiar situation because <clears throat> I didn't really know what I'm doing with myself 
and trying to get away from where I was coming from. Now, the last thing I want to do is gain notoriety and gain fame and be in the spotlight. But at the same time, my goal to do what I want to do currently is kind of also doing that. Um, the rift setting almost guarantees anonymity. Keep that in mind. Um, so to build our reputation to join this group, I'm all for. Um, I just still feel like, first and foremost, I think the best thing for us to do would be to find um, a place where we can get a, a decent amount of um, supplies, and not just base supplies, but like actual like um, things that can help us survive besides food and water. Well, if you remember what uh, Harmony was saying, is that more uh northeast where we are is where whistler's perches with her father is and there we can gather materials and things that we might need there so that's if anything if we do happen to go to the temple of saints we already are in route if we do happen to take the travels with her north You be, you be listening to the uh, his two partners uh, discuss this. Nods his head and says very clearly. At first light, we follow Harmony and Pilgrim, stop in Whistler's perch, resupply, and then head off. Okay, I uh, I nod toward Bear. Uh, Ymir. Um. Okay. So no, no thoughts about the plug or the firebase. Well, we have you mean the frost, frost base spark. We've got the plug, and then. Would you guys like to have... at any point if you guys want to go to the map? You just let me know. It's no worries at all. Yeah, can you pull up that same map? Yeah, that'd Absolutely. be helpful. Yeah, sorry. I'm trying to look at this little map. No worries at all. I'm going to I'm gonna make this so that you guys can access it. I just haven't finished it yet, so. No, you're good. Um, and what was with Spear's Edge again? That's basically going toward... To, towards uh, the... um, the, Where our for father. final... final No. Oh, no, no. That's going towards Ket Ketterfall. Yeah, it's going to be our final resting area not final resting area but, but going toward where, where our die. main quest is basically so there's this, the dark star observatory help as well why don't we go ahead and pull this up so that you guys can see the relationship of you guys are talking about going to whistler's perch and this will let you zoom in I believe. pretty decent amount yeah i see it oh, oh i see reflex point yeah, so it's it's basically northeast. Okay. And then I'll switch you back over to the other one. I just wanted you to get a rough reference of, you know. No, that's perfect. Thank you. Absolutely. Um It should be for you guys too that you can right click and drag to move around the map. And then I think it's Alt. Is it? Maybe it's Control. Uh, if you hold down Control and then use your mouse wheel in and out, that'll let you zoom. So that way you can, you know, get around a little more quickly. I got like five words out of that. Oh, shit. I'm sorry, guys. Um, yeah, if you right click and hold on the map, you should be able to scroll around the map quickly. And if mm -hmm. you hold down control and then use your mouse wheel, that should let you zoom in and out quickly. So, Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, so it just sounds like the Temple of Saints is our next destination then, since there's no back and forth information about what we should do about the other two. 
So I guess uh, I'll just get up from the chair and then uh, head to like, I guess, uh, this next to the wall or something and start maybe like knocking out some push-ups and shit. Just start basically exercising. All and right. then for at least like two hours and then uh, I'll sit there and meditate until everybody uh, lights out, so to say. Okay. All right. You get a, a pretty good workout in and um, meditation actually helps you quite a bit. There's been a lot to process and you're noticing that uh, in your meditation, you're noticing that it's, um, it's going to take you a while to be able to really kind of sort through everything that's been happening and, and even just kind of get a big picture of, of your place in all of these kind of major events over the last just like two days. Um, Ren is doing what for the rest of his time? Oh, just, he's just taking apart his armor, looking (laughs) at his spell combination and his configuration of his um, jewels and wiring and whatnot with the spell cast into it, making sure the, 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 it's properly enhanced, um, maybe even refreshing his memory of certain things to get back to how the blade maybe was uh, dressed and uh, put together and maybe thinking maybe if there's anything different from that construction to his construction, if he could maybe borrow the idea or try a little thing. And then uh, try to reapply that to his armor. Okay. uh, Um... Without breaking or taking apart his armor. Like, so like if he has um, like a spare components to keep that aside, because if I'm not sure how long it takes, I haven't done construction quite stuff yet. And is it something I already had? Do you want to have that be the main focus of your time until you hit the sack? For for the, for the, for this night? Yeah. I, I mean, I just yeah, I'd like to get this armor working properly before I can move to new things. Okay, you feel like you can in the time you have before you'd need to before you'd need to get some sleep and be reasonably rested, you feel like you'd be able to make a full attempt at reworking the armor. Um, depending on how things came out, it may have not improved, it may have something different quirky about it, or it may be completely fixed. Who knows? But you feel like you have enough time to give it okay. like one full attempt tonight. Yeah, because I figure I'm not doing research for creating a new thing. This is something that's already created, just trying to fix. So I figured I wouldn't take that much time, but I didn't know how much. Okay. Um, you're going to want to start looking at your techno wizardry creation skill because we're mm-hmm. going to need a roll on that, and you're going to be plus 15. Um. And Ymir, what is it you're wanting to do for the rest of the evening? Uh, Ymir, I am I am gonna say everybody goes ahead goes ahead and eats. I just okay. need to know from each of you how much you want to eat. If you want to get like full, full, or if you just want to kind of pick at some shit. Uh, Forty three, my... nice. All right, man. You um, you are easily able to figure out what the problem was strangely enough in your adventures um at some inn or in some salvage yard somewhere you had picked up an errant dwarven hair and it had somehow during the creation process of your armor it had come loose from your clothing and found its way um into one of the very delicate uh uh, electrical magical hybrid boards that govern the systems of your armor and poof instant beard and and ale scum uh burping so uh as you remove the dwarven hair and kind of recheck the systems poof right before you're ready uh, for bed tonight on you're... the palm the face on that one feeling pretty <laughs> like jeez i can't believe i fucking missed that you're uh you're able to test it out and sh- sure enough it is completely defect free now so well done sir well done um all right so how much does everybody want to have to eat i'm um, gonna eat my fill okay you get good and full pick through some I'm of the different eat... variety 
a healthy amount, but not to not to, uh, not in excess by any means. But definitely uh, to hold me over in case you know I don't get to eat tomorrow. But not, you know. Okay. All right. Um, you Just go ahead and healthy. get yourself all full, but not overboard. Um, you guys each have a few days worth of rations. By the way, we're not going to keep like crazy track of any of this stuff, but just so that you know, you each have enough in like essentially like military, uh, what are they called? BD MREs, MREs, that's it, that's it. MREs, so we'll say that, (laughs) right? We'll say that you each have, um, you know, three days worth of those to keep you in top, you know, shape in case you don't have other, you know, means of food, so. I've got um, extra rations of my BVDs in case I shit myself. <laughs> All right. Um. So, Akama, you continue uh, what you were doing. Um, after your meditation, you actually feel much more relaxed. You feel some of that tension that you seem to deal with constantly um, has left you, and you feel kind of refocused and, and at ease. Um, so as you go to lay down and get some rest, um, you definitely feel like mentally you've gotten yourself like recentered, refocused, and you're ready to, to take on whatever challenges come next. Uh, you also feel a nice little swole going on. You definitely got your, you got your pump on. So, um, okay, Ymir. Ymir is going to eat uh, until he is full and focused, but not overbearing. He's had a lot to drink tonight, and yes, he's had some food, but he's going to eat to where he's going to be completely level-headed and ready for battle uh, tomorrow. He is studying both the blade and the plate on the table, looking at the runes very closely, studying the metal composition, looking at the magical energy that runs like veins through both the plate and the metal because of how it was fused kind of with the uh, blood magic or necromancy um, in the actual blade. Before he goes to bed, though, Before he goes to bed, remembering his companion outside, he unlocks the door and locks it as he walks down into the hallway and hails the bartender and requests that Wotek be brought out some fresh um, burger, like a large amount of cooked uh, burger meat for his friend outside to enjoy uh, overnight while... um, the trio rest so he studies the objects goes down and orders that returns to the room locks the door behind him as you you head down and you talk to the staff you find out that they've basically been going out and checking on them every hour and every other hour they've been bringing them a bunch of fucking food um (laughs) they've explained that as they've been watching uh they can't believe that they can see uh, his flesh knitting itself back together from the inside out. And uh, uh, Sissy actually tells you that several several of the local children, which it kind of sends a shiver up your spine to think what children around here look like, but uh, she says that several of the local children got quite a fright while they were all gathered around staring at him up close and his eyeball popped back in. And, uh, and so she kind of chuckles when she tells you this, but you realize that they're taking excellent care of them. Excellent care of them. Um, so well, he, being satisfied at the staff's answer, he returns to his room, uh, kind of mid step turns around on the stairs and returns to his room with his companions, locks the door behind him, and continues to study the objects. But before going to bed, he returns the plate to his pack to make sure that it's he's ready to go tomorrow with no interruptions. Okay. You get it all secured, and you actually take the precaution of wrapping. Um, do you do you want to keep the plate and the blade, or do you want to leave? How did, no, what's I'm happening? leaving the blade for Kama. Yeah, I figure we could. You mirror figures um, when it comes time when we find a smithing shop, then he can just take the blade blade off and try to work his magic after studying it. 
Okay. So, a comma, keep in mind, and Ren, you keep in mind as well, you guys are both carrying some big shit. One has the arm, one has the blade. So, you're going to want to figure out, you know, where you're storing them. Um, okay, everybody is set, yes? Anything else? Yes. Uh, as, uh, Yamiya gets back upstairs and, uh, comes inside, I get up from my, uh, bed and walk towards the door and just double checks the lock. Okay. Um, you definitely feel like something is off for some reason, but the lock is definitely secure and whatever it is that feels off, you definitely can't put your finger on it. You you can't, you take a few moments as you're kind of finishing up your check for the evening to, to run over the day's events in your mind. And there's so many large things that have happened that are just so glaringly uh, huge and important and, and new to you that a lot of the more mundane things have kind of probably slipped by. And you're almost sure that it's some little detail that you probably heard in passing that you just... There's something, there's something that's nagging you just a bit, but it's small enough that you just can't seem to recall it. And finally, after several moments of uh, triple checking things to give yourself extra time to try and remember, um, you realize that it's just not going to happen and you're definitely tired enough to be ready to be done for the day. Um, So you guys all start breaking down. And everybody, what do people sleep in? My it's big ass not, giant I'm, bunk. I'm not being a creep. I this is it's just kind of important. Uh, I'd probably uh if uh probably just like boxer briefs, but then like I probably would if I have a way to detach or untach parts of my limbs to make uh, myself more comfortable and not have that heavy weight on the edges of my uh, body. Are you saying you want to take your arms off, essentially? Um, Maybe not my arms, because I'm not that... Uh, you know, no, being in a strange <laughs> area... I mean, I figured if I was going to do that, it would be a way I could just snap them on in, a, in an instant. But See, this still. is why I'm asking. Is it definitely... This is, all this shit's going to matter. All of it's going to Yeah, matter. no, um... Uh, I I don't feel I feel comfortable enough to do that quite yeah so I'll, I'll I'd probably just um I might be a never nude about taking my limbs off I might have to well no I mean if I was playing like RPGs and playing like I get you like yeah like yeah a paladin that never takes his armor oh, it takes ten <laughs> minutes to put your armor back on well then I guess I'm sleeping in my armor like right. like that's how people play and I I can't yeah. stand that I want to be totally more realistic about it I'm just um, saying yeah being but yeah no <laughs> in, in this in this and tough man that's tough well but like, like I said like I would do that only if I felt comfortable that I could put them on in an instant and get be, be going I wonder um, if you but, wouldn't have plans for a set of very lightweight like domestic attachments for that exact purpose kind of like how a person will wear a bathrobe you know what i mean like it it might be good to have something that's not necessarily md armor but that you could combat ready pick up a, a glass of water then again don't you have manipulate objects i mean that actually does play well because you 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 don't yeah. need an arm to pick up water in the middle of the night or flush yeah, no, I've manipulated or objects. Anything else. Yeah. okay all right um, right, right now i'm just I, i've got my uh my uh my domestic limbs on. So I'm just walking around with four peg legs. Just walk- <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'd probably, yeah, I'd probably just be, um, a, uh, like, uh, like, like a, like your kind of boxer briefs under armor type attire with my, but I'd still have my limbs fully attached. Okay. All right. With all my stuff at bedside, ready to go. Need be. Okay. All right. And to armor up, for you to put your armor on probably oh, we're going to say a minute to two minutes depending. Yeah, it's on not very elaborate. It's basically like a body suit. Yeah. And yeah. yours they, is more they... complicated than most just because of the nature of that kind of part of it. Um, but 
for the average person, it's going to be under a minute. Like for like a chess piece, like you would think of Kevlar or something like that with a little extra attachments. If there's arms, legs, a head piece that actually connects, all that kind of stuff, usually, guys, it'll be a minute to two minutes, just so you have a reference point. Um, okay, so you've got all your gear at the ready. You are getting ready for bed. Ymir, you said you're sleeping in what? Since Ymir's armor is fairly light, because it is when it, he's not in active form, remember, it's just basically like a fur cloak, shoulder pads, and uh, maybe his helmet, boots, and gauntlets, right? He would take off his helmet and place it like on the ground near him, and maybe his boots, but I feel like he wouldn't take off the fur cloak or the gauntlets. I just don't feel like he would. I feel like maybe he would take his boots off and his helmet, but he would still want to be somewhat ready. So in a pinch, in a survival moment, especially out in the wilderness where he's from, he's used to getting up and going in a second. And since he's a big bare-chested giant, he doesn't have a big fucking chest plate to worry about or anything like that. So, yeah. Uh, right. So boots and helmet, okay. goblet still on. All right, and Akama, uh, you're what are you doing? Um, I'm basically in my other undergarment. Uh huh. So I guess I take off like the uh, top piece, and I guess the the pants itself. Okay. Uh. So same kind of thing, just like sleeping in your underwear kind of thing? Not necessarily my underwear, but yeah, like, yeah, I guess. Well, you know, I mean, you said... Spider-Man jammies. Right? Underwears uh, of any nature? Yeah, I, I got, I got a uh, cloth, so... <laughs> I got Hello Kitty uh, underwear. Oh, oh uh, nice. Yeah, but it's the dark version. All right, well, yeah, yeah. if you're... so Bye, you're, Kitty. If you're... <laughs> If you guys are basically just, you know, in your underclothes, that's definitely good enough. I just want to make sure if anybody's, like, saying something like, yeah, I'm sleeping in my armor, so no worries at all. So you um, guys are can all... Can I also... Sure. Uh, the drone I put back together, for my tinker with it, could I uh, figure out how to maybe set it so it, like, floats by the door? If someone comes in, it could zap them? Uh... I don't know if I have that great of an understanding of it yet, or if it does it has the capabilities. But you feel like you could set it to do that, but you're not very confident that if somebody came to the door just to check on you guys, there might not be they won't kill him. a problem. It's not supposed to kill. It's just supposed to stun. True. You're, I'm just saying but you're not sure if you stun. can make sure it. it wouldn't stun somebody like just the well, that's staff fine. or something. So. I'm fine. I'm fine with the, with the staff coming in our room. They shouldn't be coming in our room. Fair enough. I, I'm not arguing locked. with you, man. Not at all. Doors man. locked. So. All right. So you go ahead yeah. and set Should it up. Lock. You want it unquote locked. You know, I will put up a. Uh, I will put up a do not disturb for the housekeeping, so they don't accidentally come in. Okay. Um. You if just we put sleep a sock in late. on the handle. All right. <laughs> and uh, uh, I don't have socks. Do I don't have. I don't have real feet. <laughs> <laughs> they have a sock on the inside just for you guys to use for that. Oh, okay. They have those. Okay. Right. <laughs> they supply the socks. Um, and um, yeah, and I'll I'll have it uh, ready to pulse anyone that comes in be until I wake up or someone wakes me. Um, okay. and it'll be it'll be it'll be if I can focus it at towards like the door or if there's a window, but like not if someone gets up in our in our room to go to the bathroom or something like that. And I'll let them know that I'm putting this up, and if they need me to disable it for whatever reason, I can. Okay. All but, right. Um. So you go ahead and do that. I assume everybody's cool with it. Yep. All right. Yep. Okay. So it starts uh, setting guard. It just simply hovers around in a small circle in the room, just kind of keeping an eye on the entrance mostly and, and, you know, everything else, you know, windows and so forth. Um, vigilantly, you guys feel like it's a pretty secure facility for, you know, letting your guard down. Um, so everybody very quickly is able to, uh, drift off to sleep. Uh, all right, Ren, why don't you give me a, 
Uh, computer programming check. What? Uh, can you give me a computer programming check? Oh, yeah, sure. Sorry, I just heard a check. Uh, computer programming. Okay. No bonus? Uh, 